going to pass you to Steve Lowe, who's our first speaker. So he's going to be um, sharing with us a lot of what culture means. Yeah. But um, before that, all right, I want to do justice, you know, to him. And Steve is, a, is very passionate about starting, you know, companies and all that. And he did that by co-founding Reading Roots, which is a literacy program for underprivileged children. And also, he, I know Steve for many years and I know he's a silent investor in many startups. So he's the one sitting there, you know, whether we call him angel investor or not, um, he's one who silently, you know, put the bets on people and he's able to see potential in people. So there you go, you know, culture with a different swing to it. He has over 20 years of course leading sales business transformation for Singapore listed as well as global Fortune 500 companies yeah, in the distribution business. Now he has lived and worked not only in Singapore, of course, but in US, Taiwan. I remember a phase having to communicate with him, checking with him whether in Taiwan or not. <laughs> but basically I know he, he spent extended periods there. Um, he also was in Thailand, China, developing teams of people I know to the sound of like hundreds of, of people uh, directly and indirectly reporting to him. And so therefore, you know, Steve can think wide, you know, outside of, of the box in a strategic manner. And I know Steve can also dive very deep in a very tactical uh, manner as well. And uh, well, he has dabbled with so many you know, relationships across different industry sectors. I think, you know, um, I'm so happy to hear that actually Steve took a step forward to finally, you know, uh, come out and then lead his own company. Yay. Um, so over to you, Steve. And Steve's going to walk with us on does culture really matter? I'm going to stop share and then pass the floor to you, Steve. You okay? Yeah, thank you so much, Eileen, for the introduction. Um, hi everyone, a good afternoon. Um, the last couple of days in Singapore has really been uh, like a holiday, right? It's uh, very nice and cool. And uh, I hope uh, my yep. screen is starting yep. to show up. Oh yes, I can okay. see. Okay, all right. Let me just get to the right presentation view. Yep. Uh, is it coming up yet? Sorry, yeah, a little bit slow. It is, it is. I see it now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So thanks, Ali, for the, the introduction. And um, I just want to share a little bit right now um, of the journey that, you know, I'm taking. And again, you know, today, um, it's really more of a sharing about, you know, um, some of the personal experiences. And I hope that it helps you, right? And uh, I hope to also uh, present to you uh, some nuggets, right? Um, and of course, you know, at the end of the day, um, different people experience it uh, differently. But one of the things that I think we always ask ourselves, right, uh, when we, either when we are seeking for a company to work in, or uh, we are joining a company already, we always ask, like, hey, is this culture thing very fluffy? Yeah? You know, like, uh, usually, you know, you go into interviews, right? People will ask you, oh, what's your experience? Uh, what have you done? How many people you have managed? You know, and... And a lot of it seems to be a little bit more tactical, right? And sometimes they ask you also, what have you done before? What are your strategies, right? And culture, you, you wonder like, hey, nobody ever asked me, right? During a interview, you know, uh, are you a fit for my company, right? They don't, right? Some, uh, most of the time, I think when we are interviewing, you know, or we are being interviewed, uh, it hardly comes up. But I think one of the things that we all know is that at the background, right, uh, your interviewer is actually sussing you out, right? And they, they always are trying to figure out, okay, I have these couple of candidates, right? Which one visually as well, uh, visually meaning like from their, their perception, right? Um, which one actually fits best into this team, right? So today I'm going to share with you a few insights about, you know, my journey, right? From, you know, being interviewed, all the way to being hired, right? So this big elephant in the room, I'm going to address it very, very, very early on. Does culture fit really, really matter, right? And um, I think many of you guys might have heard before uh, Peter Drucker, right? He's a very um, famous uh, guy, incidentally, you know, about business strategy. But he says this, this is one of his famous quotes, right? Uh, culture eats 
strategy for breakfast. Right, so what, what does this really mean? So I remember when I first saw this, right, uh, years ago when I first read uh, his book, I always wonder like, hey, what is he talking about? You know, um, strategy should be more important than culture, right? But, you know, he lends a different perspective and I think it's very apt today, right? That no matter what is the business strategy that the company is trying to implement, what is the core ingredient, right? And the core ingredient is the team, right? The success and the efficacy of what is going to be uh, implementing the plan is the people. So if the people or the culture does not support it, then whatever strategy you have is not going to work, right? So like for me, you know, in, in my experience previously, I mentioned just now that, you know, I was in the, working in Taiwan, right? I was quite fortunate. Um, I headed a, a listed Singapore listed company uh, in Taiwan as the GM. And I remember when I first joined them um, uh, in Taiwan, um, the business was not doing so well, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, our chairman and our CEO of the company said, hey, you know, why don't you go over to Taiwan and figure out what's going on and can you turn it around, right? And so when I arrived there, you know, uh, my, my Mandarin is not very good and let alone it having to be fun tzu, right? Complicated Chinese there versus our... So I, I, I actually did struggle a bit, but I told myself, no, you know, don't worry, just talk to the people, right? You would actually learn a lot faster. So I started digging around, asking questions, um, talked to all the department heads, right? Uh, we had more than 100 people uh, in the organization there. Um, and uh, when, when I started to dig a little bit more and when I started to have more one-to-one -one conversations during lunch and evening, sometimes dinners, if they wanted to, um, I realized that something was wrong, right? Um, number one, the people, uh, the, you know, the, the, the department heads were all very, very competent people with lots of experience. But one of the things that I noticed was that they all worked in silo, right? They would say that, hey, you know, uh, as long as I do my job right, right, I'm the head of marketing, as long as I, I make sure all my marketing campaigns are run, the salesperson say, oh, as long as they're bringing in the orders, you know, and the factory guy will say, oh, as long as I produce whatever that is coming in, I do my job, then that's it, right? But that was a cultural problem, right? There was no um, unity, right, in trying to actually make things work. So the total customer experience for a customer was not there. Everybody was working in silos, right? So I, I, I had to take a bit of time to actually speak to the individuals, right, um, the leaders, right, in the department heads and say, hey, you know, maybe this is something else you can look at. So in short, right, um, we had to revamp our mindset. And thankfully, you know, all the department heads were supportive of that. They, you know, they, they felt that it was not just talk, let's do it together. And we managed to start to turn the, the company thinking around. We made it into a habit and we recreated the culture. And after that happened, right, then all the strategies that the company had, right, and all the other things that we put in place could start to come to fruition, right? Before that, it was just a big jumble mess. So the answer is culture is very important, right? Now, then let's switch gears and then we can look at, you know, um, from company's perspective, right? Then you would think, hey, you know, I interview at different companies, right? Uh, like, you know, some of the companies, right, you see that, oh, they, they have like ping pong table, you know, they have very nice uh, a food, you know, salad bars, cafe. they have even yeah. a cafe. I know, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So you think like, oh, is that, that must be a great culture to work in, right? Mm. But the question is that I think, you know, the, one of the things is that is actually the, the environment that you're in, right? But what really makes the culture is actually the leadership and the people inside. So right now I'm gonna sh I'm gonna just pause here, right? And I'm gonna maybe put up uh, some of the company mission statements, right? And see if that's something that uh, you can figure out who it is. So the first one, right? Uh, this company says that our mission is to organize the organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful, right? So maybe you can type in your chat right now. Uh, which company do you think this is? It's a, just a hint, huh? it's a very big company. <laughs> Any, oh, wow. 
Okay. What do you Keep know? What do you know? What do you know? Whoa. Wow. 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 Yeah. Good. Yeah, we have uh, Google. We have third. Wiki. <laughs> we have wow. We have a lot of Google. Okay. <laughs> very good. So seems like everybody, a lot of people here knows, um, you know, knows Google well. So we don't just use Google, but we also know the mission <laughs> statement, right? Yeah. So so this is this is very good and. And actually, you know, when, when um, we study Google, right, one of the things is that we realize that a lot of them, uh, uh, like Google especially, is very core for them uh, when they actually look for employees. I, I was quite fortunate uh, in my early days when I used to visit uh, Silicon Valley quite a fair bit, right? I, I, I did uh, go to Google when they were still very small, right? not so big yet. Uh, I used to drive by and I said, wow, this is really cool, you know, they're, they're the place. And... Um, what, what was really different about them was that uh, when I went for my meeting there, I uh, realized that they're actually very uh, open, right? Um, I also visited some of the other silicon uh, giants, right, uh, that, that are a little bit more traditional. I, I think many of us know that uh, in the past, you know, uh, there are some companies where you have to wear a white shirt and a black tie, right, uh, to go to work, right? Then you have Google, right? Um, open, very innovative, you know, um, has a lot of, smart people. Um, but one thing that you notice, right, about them is the one of these points here, which is they are actually, they are so big, but they, in their mindset, they think small company family report, report, right? And actually, this is a very, very important part of uh, Google's culture, right? And you can see it from their innovations, right? A lot of them uh, actually work very urgently in the organization. Uh, a lot of them uh, actually form small little groups, right? Despite the company being so big, they actually have a lot of small subgroups that are doing projects. Um, and I think that the two CEOs were also kind enough to actually encourage their employees to actually take, you know, one day of the week, I think half a day or one way of the week to do whatever pet project they wanted, right? So that set in a culture of innovation and openness, right, for, for them. And I'm going to show you the next company here. Um, they, they say to everybody that we are a company of pioneers. It is our job to make bold bets and we will get our energy from, you know, inventing on behalf of our customers. Um, so who is this company? Success is measured against the possible, not the impossible. And can you imagine the CEO talking there, right? And for today's pioneers, that's exactly, there's no place on earth that they would rather build than Take a pause here. Who, who wants to guess who, they, who this company is? Okay, we have Elon Musk. Yes, sounds, uh, sounds very close to him. Let's keep it coming. Uh, this company is, okay, we have Tesla. IBM, that's what Jasper was uh, guessing. Uh -huh. Okay, Amazon, yes, keep it coming, Amazon. Mm. Mm. All right, so we have quite a number coming in. So NASA. Ah. Wow, yes. <laughs> you, you, yeah. know, you know where, where they are getting their answers, right? Where are they getting oh, the answers from? The Google. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we say during our training classes as well, you know. So we are amongst learned. <laughs> yes, yes. We, we have quite a number of Teslas, and I, I must attest <laughs> that you know Tesla's culture is also very similar to this company. But this company is Amazon, right? None other than Amazon. Uh, those who got it. So right. yeah, those that got it right, amazing. So you guys know your stuff. <laughs> Right, so you see Amazon, right, is also a very innovative company, yeah. right? Uh, uh, you know, both Google and Amazon are both like uh, trillion dollar companies, right? I think one is 1.3 trillion and the other one is 1.5 trillion or something. The stock market keeps, keeps everybody very busy and guessing, but uh, both are very big companies, right? Um, but you can see that the approach and the culture is actually quite different, right? So, um, you know, in my my previous corporate job, I had the opportunity to actually go to Seattle and, and visit uh, Amazon and their leadership team, mm -hmm. right? And you can see that, you know, the, the, the sense that you get uh, when working with the two companies are actually quite different, mm -hmm. right? And actually, you can see that the culture and the outputs that come out, uh, the way that they look at a problem or try to solve uh, uh, an issue, right, is the approach is actually quite different. 
So in Amazon's case, Amazon says that, hey, you know, you can see even in their statement, right, they will be inventing on behalf of the customer. So they actually spend a lot of time, you know, being very customer centric. They constantly ask the customers, hey, you know, uh, what are they looking out for? Where have we gone wrong? Right. Mm -hmm. um, you can even see in their algorithms, right? So for those of us that shop on Amazon and Amazon Prime, um, you'll see that they actually study each of our individual behavior, right? Using AI, right? To understand exactly um, what we are looking for. And sometimes you will find that the algorithm works so well, they will tell you, hey, you know, uh, Steve, this is what you need. And go like, oh, really? Do I really need that? <laughs> but after a while, because of that match, you you know, further down along the road, you, you actually might buy that stuff, right? That they're pushing to you. So, so you know, so the, the way that they think is actually uh, quite different. And, and so both companies also try to push the boundary. One is maybe more innovation-based and one is more customer-centric, right? So you can see just from that, right? Um, different companies have different uh, DNA. And so what does that really mean for us, right? Um, when we are, you know, uh, looking for a job and when we are trying to join a company, right? So I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that, right? But before I move into that, right? Although companies are different, right? And they have different cultures, but there's one commonality, right? Um, in the way that they build culture, right? And so I'm just going to talk a little bit about that, right? And, uh, you know, as companies, as corporate companies, when I used to sit down with my team and we think about what kind of culture we want to build with, my, with our organizations, right? So I had teams all over the world um, in Silicon Valley. I, I also had team in uh, UK and uh, Germany, right? In, in Asia, you know, we are headquartered based out of here, but we have many countries, right? That have uh, staff all around. And we always think about, hey, you know, we are all... Uh, coming from different countries, is it even possible to have a team culture, right? So, so we, you know, when we went into the building blocks and looked at culture building, we realized that, yes, there is a, a wide possibility. I mean, you look at these two companies that we have right now, both Google and Amazon, they hire tons of different nationalities, right, of different beliefs, different uh, value systems, but at the end of the day, you, when you work with their employees, right, you realize that they actually have very similar approaches, right? So what are some of the uh, commonalities, right, for companies when they look? So there are five things, right? So first of all is the vision, right? So we always say that it's very important that the team understands what the purpose of the team is, right? Whether it is the company or as a smaller subset of the company, whether you're a marketing team, you're a sales team or operations team, right? Then follow up with that is the company's values, right? So the values are actually called the culture, right? So the vision will tell you what's the purpose, but the values are actually the guidelines that actually help you in your behavior and the mindsets that are required to achieve that vision, right? And then with the tool, it has to come into practice, right? So the execution piece, um, it's very important because the practices actually make the habit. And when people are moving in alignment, right, together, working together to a common purpose and goal, right, that's when things can really accelerate, right? And then finally, uh, and then we have people, right? So the people um, are very important because of their willingness and their ability to actually embrace those values, right? And so some of the, some of the best companies in the world uh, today if you look at their recruitment uh, practices, right, uh, they have very, very stringent checks on uh, culture, right? The person's, uh, you know, uh, behavior, the person's way of thinking, the person's uh, previous um, uh, experiences and the way that he handles things, right? Uh, those are all very important. And finally, you know, the narrative, right? Um, every okay, company so I'm going to interject here, Steve, because yeah. we are still seeing your Google Amazon slide. Are you moving on? No, no, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still talking my final point before I move Ayyoh. to the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. But thanks, Eileen. Just checking. Yeah, for... Just yes. checking. Yes, yes, it's a prelude to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the narrative, right? So every company has actually a unique story, right? So, um, so I'm going to share with you next, right? Uh, a little bit of that journey, right, that, that I had. And uh, maybe this might be helpful because, you know, uh, you might be looking at various different companies. 
Uh, for me, I was quite fortunate to start off my first job at a Silicon Valley technology company. Uh, I think many of us here know HP, right? Hewlett Packard. Um, so when I was there, right, the, the, you know, the, the values were all about invention, right? So the people that they hired were all very uh, innovation centric, right? So there was a big R&D hub here, product design hub here, right? So although it's a Silicon Valley company, but when it came to Singapore, right, it were able to localize and actually integrate uh, people in, right? So um, I think it's very important to um, actually understand the organization that you're going into, right? And one of the very important things is that you will realize that um, we spend actually more than 40 to 50% of our waking hours, right? Our wake hours at companies, right? And, um, and for me, the way that I see, you know, company culture is not really company culture. I always tell my team, it's actually more like family values, right? And the, the truth is that, you know, for people that you work with, 40, 50% of your life, right, of your time, right, uh, you should treat them more like family than just another colleague, right? So um, with, as such, right, I think, you know, in my later years of my uh, corporate life, uh, my mindset has changed, right? I, I see them as my family members. I see how I can work together with them to, to make it a better place to work in, right? And how, if we have these goals in place, how do we do it better as a family? So, um, yeah. So then, you know, I, I switched gears and I went to join um, one of the largest uh, cap capitalized company uh, in the world, General Electric, right? And General Electric was very, very different from HP, Right, uh, so one was very innovation centric. Um, General Electric, under the leadership of Jack Welsh and uh, later on Jeff Email, right, was very excellence driven. Right, it always you know focused on leadership. How can you get better? Um, you know, what are the ideas that could actually make the company uh, stronger? Right, so so the the culture was different. Right, but the underlying uh, you know uh, the underlying values were still very much the same, right? So I think it's very important, um, you know, as we uh, look at companies, right, that we want to join, that although they, they seem to be, you know, like, ah, oh, maybe they're all American companies, or all European companies that I'm looking at, right, they, they might be the same. But actually, the truth is that it can be very different, right? And then um, I was also in a local listed company, right? And it's quite interesting because, um, uh, you know, it, the, the whole organizational structure was very different. It was more family-based, right? Uh, it was a company where I walked into the office and I can see the chairman, the CEO, and everybody sitting there, right? Versus in a corporate company, you walk in, you will see your managers uh, in, in the office only. You hardly get a chance to actually ever meet. Just like a tree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the receptionists, which are all important people. Yes. Yes, Absolutely. extremely <laughs> Yeah. 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 And in those so, early days, we have dispatch clubs, right? Remember? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, wow, I still remember trolling that. with all the letters and all that. Oops, let's not say anymore. We are revealing our age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, even down to that, right? You will find that uh, Irene is right. Even down to that, uh, uh, they understood the culture, and Absolutely. and right. They know what's company. going on? They know who talks to who. They exactly. Know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so now, you know, as I switch gears and, you know, I'm fortunate enough to, to have a team, uh, you know, work together with me on this new uh, venture that I'm in, right, called Milo. Um, it's a startup, right, uh, in the mental health, mental wellness space, where we just started out. Uh, but it's very exciting for us because, you know, um, all of us actually come from different backgrounds. Uh, one is, you know, an XMD of a bank, you know, another one is a head of, an APEC head of a, a medical, pub, uh, sorry, a educational publisher, one of the largest in the world. And we realized that as we came together, right, um, we, we, had, we have the opportunity now to actually set the culture that we want, right, in our startup. And I was just uh, talking uh, to my co-founders and, you know, we wanted to make sure that we started right. And I'll share a little bit more about that. But you know, what I'm trying to say through this whole um, journey, right, of different culture, different cultures, right, uh, and, you know, different corporates, uh, in different segments, right, um, there, there are differences and um, it's important, I think, 
for all of us who are looking for jobs, right, to actually be very cognizant of that, right? Um, and then here, I, I just put together some of the things that um, uh, just from a personal experience, right? So you might say that, hey, you know, what you are just describing is really too high level, right? You know, it's always, you know, a lot of talk on high level, but when we bring it down, right, uh, when I was a hiring manager or when I was an employee being interviewed, right, um, these were some of the things that actually I looked out for, right? Uh, um, and so I broke it down to team members, a team leader and a senior leader, right? And so in a team leader, you know, we really want to actually figure out if the person could fit into the team, right? The incumbent team that there is there, right? Are they a self? Uh, are they a are they a team player? Are they uh, self aware? Are they dependable to get the task done? You know, are they um, is the mindset uh, in the right place? Is the attitude good? Right? Are they flexible? Are they able to help cover for other people? Right? Then we pro progress on to a team leader, right? Maybe a manager or a director of an organization, right? We will start to think, hey, you know, this this person would need to lead. Right. So number one, you know, you have to be confident, right? You cannot be like, oh, I don't know. I everything also don't know. The employees ask you, hey, so what should we be focused on? Uh, I don't know. Cannot, right? So number one, you know, you have to be confident, right? You need to be able to lead your team with good communication, very clear, right? What you want to do, right? A can do attitude, right? Because people come to you with their problems, right? Sometimes they have some recommendations, uh, but you, ca you cannot have the mindset of, like everything also cannot. Right. And, and that's going to be a big problem for an organization if they have a leader that everything also say cannot. Right. So, but on top of that, uh, I also recognize that today, you know, we are more of a melting pot. Right. Inclusivity is actually very, very important. Right. So, like in, in my previous job, right, in, in our Singapore office, just in my team alone, uh, we have, you know, uh, we have more than, I think, eight nationalities. Right, and uh, being able to actually understand each people's views, right, and where they come from, and their recommendations are very important as well. And then when you move on to, you know, more the C-suite leadership stuff, right, um, the expectations change, right. Uh, people start to look at, okay, you know, no longer driving the quarter-to-quarter -quarter type business, right, but more also as a visionary, right. Where do you see the the company going? Right. Uh, other than being able to see the big picture, um, the, nowadays, you know, we really have to see the real picture, right? Um, the, the environment is changing so much with COVID as well as uh, all the other uh, business models that are changing. People are actually looking for leaders that are realistic, uh, but yet being able to lead um, and influence the team and into the new future, right? So um, there's more. Right, it's not just this, right? I recognize these are just things that I could think of on my Sunday evening. <laughs> but um, there are more than these and it's constantly changing, right? So um, one of the recommendations that I have is then, okay, so what would the, the job seeker uh, should do, right? To actually ace that conversation um, about culture. Right, so these are some of the steps that I, I would think of. Uh, if you have more, please feel free to type into the chat because I'm also learning with you, right? So if you have more than these, please uh, type in. But for me, you know, when I, when I um, start looking at the organization. So I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute everybody. And then uh, Steve, you have to unmute yourself. You Hi, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so this is the big question, right? Uh, today. So what is the culture of the organization is, I think, something, whichever organization that you are in, interviewing for, um, it's extremely important, right? And to Eileen's point, you know, just now he showed us about, uh, she showed us about Zappos, right? Yeah. You can see that um, a lot of these information are actually communicated on the website. Yeah. So, um, you know, no brainers. First thing you need to know, okay, what is the, the organization culture like? And nowadays, the Google also can help you find a lot other information, right? Um, and then, you know, the second one is, yeah, this, the second one is actually, you know, the role and expectation, right? So know exactly 
where you fit in the larger scheme of things, right? Uh, in the organization and what are the expectations, right? And then. Yep, I've muted everybody again. <laughs> so you need to unmute. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thanks, yep. Ali. Yeah, so the, the third one is, you know, be honest with yourself, right? And ask yourself, hey, what is my fit, right? So based on the understanding that you can find from, you know, websites and other resources, right? Um, how do I fit into, into this organization? And I think before going into any interviews, it's very important to actually understand yourself, right? Because if you don't understand yourself and your interviewer starts to ask you like, hey, so tell me this, right? And then you're going to kalum kabo, right? And you know, you're going to be like, oh, shoot, you know, I didn't really think about it, right? So uh, for me, one of the things that I have done is that uh, to better understand myself and in the context of, you know, uh, hiring, right? I have uh, done some self-evaluation, right? So like, for example, I think a lot of people are very familiar with like BISC. Right, the dominance, influential, steadiness, and consciousness uh, scale. Right, uh, it's good to actually understand where you are. Right, so that uh, when someone asks you to articulate uh, who are you, right, you know. Right, uh, the second one that I found quite helpful was uh, the Myers Briggs uh, type indicator. Right, uh, you can find these resources actually online. Right, but basically, what Myers uh, Myers Briggs does is that it helps um, you to understand. Uh, your own experience, right, through four different functions, right? So one of them is sensation, intuition, feeling, and thinking, right? So some organizations, you know, they look for uh, people who are maybe a certain fit, right? So it could be a person who's more thinking, uh, or sometimes they look at, you know, for that particular position, someone who has maybe a lot more intuition, right? So I think understanding where you are uh, is important. So they, they'll give you, you know, at the end of the Myers-Briggs indicator, they'll give you a code, right? So like, for example, for mine, I am an INTJ, right? So what INTJ means is that, you know, uh, visionary strategist, right? It doesn't mean that you have uh, none of the other skills, but it means that you are stronger in this perspective, right? So um, it's helpful to actually know yourself uh, so you can articulate. Um, and then the other two that I also found quite good is one is Berkman and the other one is Caliper. So I think there are quite a number of different uh, personality groups, right, uh, out there. So good to understand yourself, right, and put yourself uh, in the shoe of the hirer and ask, you know. So fourth one, must always ask the hirer, right, especially if you're meeting an HR or a talent acquisition person. Right, ask them exactly what kind of culture uh, is in the organization and they should be able to articulate to you, right? Uh, what are the organization's uh, goals, right? Uh, are they in the midst of innovating and changing and re, you know, reimagining what their, their future is going to be like, right? So those are important questions to ask, right? Um, and then my final two points, right, uh, is consistency. So don't try to fake it. Right, because very quickly, uh, as you go into the interview rounds, you'll realize that, oh, okay, this person is not truly who he's saying he is or she is, right? And uh, finally, you know, when you go for the interview, be prepared and clear, right? Um, and at this point, I'll also, uh, if you guys have any other feedback on some of the, the tips, please type it in. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for us to learn from each other. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And my second last slide, very quickly, uh, I know um, on top of the time. So my company right now, um, it's really an e-buddy that we are creating, right? So uh, one of the things I just wanted to share is that, um, you know, for a startup like us, uh, there, there's, a, there's a mix of, you know, very old uncle and aunties, <laughs> people who are in the, you know, uh, you know, many years of uh, work experience. And we also have the younger people who are joining in. So I have about uh, uh, six to eight interns coming to join us uh, very soon. And uh, I was just having a chat with some of them yesterday and I realized, oh, wow, you know, um, the world has moved quite a fair bit. So I think, you know, always stay uh, curious. Yeah, but for us, you know, purpose and passion really drives uh, what we do, right? So um, we are in the mental health uh, space. 
So we are launching uh, in the first quarter of next year, uh, uh, an eBuddy that helps with uh, mental health, right? And it's not just the mental health portion, but it's also how to nudge people on to help them be better. So in terms of performance, in terms of their well-being, right? We have some of the best psychologists and psychiatrists in Singapore uh, in our team to really build that. So, um, so we always say, you know, it, to, to our teammates, right? If you can do it, right? Uh, if you can't, never mind, we can do it. Right? So this is something that we always remind each other. And finally, you know, we recognize that everybody is different. Everybody is unique. So, um, and, and these are the roles that I currently have on. Lee reminded me, please remember to put, but please do um, uh, look at our website, uh, www.milo.co, right? Uh, Milo actually stands for my life of hope. Right, so um, if you have some of these skills here for Java development and mobile application development, please uh, feel free to ping us right uh, over there. You can, or you can also find us on Careers Future website uh, uh, and apply. And my final slide, uh, just a thought to leave to to everyone. Right, um, a lot of people talk about culture fit, right? So I think culture fit is important. Uh, it's the cultures that is actually made by the collective us, right? But I think the other thing I want to leave with you in, in, your, in your thinking process is what can you as an individual bring to the organization, right? So I'm going to leave to you, think about how you can culture add, not just culture fit, but culture add. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for listening. Yeah, I really like that because I saw an article as well, uh, which I'm going to share later. Uh, just, just, just to just the title is about you know adapting to culture, culture adapt rather than culture fit kind of thing. So that that's a nice one, culture add. I really like that. And then you've got a question which you can maybe type in the chat later on from Ken. You know he was keeping tabs on all the words that you were rattling off. You know just when I thought everybody's dozing off, there we have Ken who is keeping tab. He said. Uh, what do you say? Vision, values, practice, people, and wow! I think he's yeah. he's really good. <laughs> and then uh, there's another question from Lisha Lisha Pack when she asks, you know, maybe you want to elaborate a little bit about the word narrative. Okay, mm. so um, yeah, so I think this is this is great. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm just um mindful of time, so I'm gonna um just grab the floor back from Steve, right? I'm so glad Steve is here with us because, you know, you, uh, Steve is a serial entrepreneur, but, but from the other side, he's investing in companies. So anybody, you know, do reach out to, to Steve. I know he's totally open to ideas.